Hey y'all, it's Keylanda. So I'm here to do a video for you all, all about my full-time job. Y'all know I do lots of things, wear lots of hats, but um, I actually pursued <clears throat> two degrees and went through all of the process to become licensed and certified as a speech language pathologist. So if you're interested in what I do for my job, how I got through all of the schooling and all, and um, perhaps you're interested in becoming a speech language pathologist yourself, then you know what to do. Just keep on watching. Okay, so um, this is my little work area um, because I am actually a virtual speech language pathologist or a teletherapist. Um, so I work from home using a webcam and a headset and a lot of people are interested in how to do that but it's basically like um, a Skype type thing where you can hear each other and see each other or you know FaceTime something like that um, and there's also um, ways that I can you know share documents and activities and games um, for the students to participate and um, engage in therapy. Um, first, I'm going to start with how I came about um, deciding that this was what I wanted to do. Um, I was um, in high school. I knew I was interested in something to do with speech and language, um, communication, all those types of things, but I just wasn't sure how to go about it. Um, I knew I wanted to help people. I knew that um, I wanted to do something rewarding, but I just wasn't sure um, exactly what I wanted to do. Um, I tossed up the ideas of being a doctor or a nurse or even an English teacher, um, something in education, and I just wasn't sure. Um, I ended up attending Clark Atlanta University in Atlanta, Georgia for one year, my freshman year of college. Um, it was quite an experience um, while I was there. Um, initially, I started off in biology because I was like, well, I'll get a degree in biology and then go on to um, be a nurse or a doctor or something like that. Um, eventually, I changed over to uh, the communication area underneath the theater department. So I took classes with lots of people who are now actors and all those types of things. But um I was more so on the speech and communication side. I didn't know if I wanted to do like broadcasting or um, something of that nature, if I wanted to go to the theater side, but I knew I wanted to study communication. Um, eventually, I took one of these online tests and something came up about being a speech language pathologist. I had never heard it referred to by that term. Um, so I looked it up, I researched it and I was like, this sounds like what I would love to do till I'm 101. I always tell people to pick something that you could do to till you're 101 because that means you really like it. So um, I researched it and after much consideration I decided to transfer away from Clark Atlanta University um, with the top reason being that they did not have a program for speech language pathology or speech therapy or anything like that. Um, and I knew that this is what I wanted to do. So the next step I did was I called around all of the speech therapists and um, speech therapy centers and all of that um, in Baton Rouge area where I'm located just to see if anyone would give me a chance to observe them at work, to see what they do so that I could see firsthand if this was what um, I was interested in doing until I was 101. Okay, so I called around and there was someone who was crazy enough to give me a chance. She said that she was actually looking for a receptionist. So she allowed me to um, come to her private practice and observe her working. And um, she also had some speech therapists under her that she was training. So I got to see lots of things like that. And of course, you know, that furthermore encouraged me to continue on, you know, once I transferred to my new school. So fast forward through the summer, I attended the University of Louisiana at Lafayette in Lafayette, Louisiana, and um, I completed their undergraduate program um, in speech language pathology and audiology. So we learned about uh, all the muscles from the waist up. Um, it's much more scientific than people think. We have to learn the inner and outer parts of the um, ear, just all types of things that, you know, some people may not realize because they think that we, you know, play with kids all day. So um, 
I decided from there to go ahead and earn my master's degree from that same university because I was a part of a program called the McNair program. And at UL Lafayette, um, those who are in the McNair program um, that actually, you know, um, become accepted to a graduate school program, um, they will pay for your tuition. And so all you have to do is pay your fees. So I was like, free tuition, shawty, I'm staying right here. Um, have to at some point take a um, praxis examination. It's called the Praxis 2 and it's specifically for our field. I know um, in education you take um, two parts to the praxis, but that's specifically for education. And this test is, is specifically for speech language pathology. So you take that, um, you get a passing score. And from there, you go on to provisional license, which allows you to practice under the supervision of um, a licensed um, speech language pathologist. Um, so I got my provisional license and um, a certificate to practice um, from the Department of Education in the state of Louisiana. Um, I worked for a year under the supervision of um, a therapist in the schools here. And um, you work full time, so you're getting paid, but you just have to be under supervision. Um, and that supervision will cover for your license, as well as when you get ready to apply to be certified. Um, and that's why um, it adds extra credentials to my name. So I already had my Master of Science, um, but then you get the CCC. Um, and that just means that you have your certificate of clinical competence. So that means that you've worked full time for a year and another therapist, um, you know, sacrifices to um, look after you and make sure you're okay. And they put their own butt on the line, you know, to um, vouch for you and say that you, you know, meet all the qualifications um, from ASHA. And ASHA is basically like everyone's boss. <laughs> Any speech language pathologist or audiologist who is certified um, has been certified by ASHA. So. Okay, so as far as my advice for someone who would like to become a speech language pathologist, and I use the terms speech language pathologist, speech therapist, speech pathologist, and SLP, I use all those interchangeably. So, excuse me, I'll just go through a couple of things you'll need to know if you would like to become a speech language pathologist. Um, first of all, if you're in high school and you still have time to, um, time left in school, be sure that, um, you maintain good grades. I know people say that, you know, for pretty much any field, but, um, specifically for, um, my career path, the, um, acceptance um, into graduate programs is usually pretty competitive and um, GPA isn't the sole factor in um, being accepted or being selected in the first round of um, graduate students for the program but um, it definitely is a factor and it definitely plays into it. Um, some schools have like um, a formula where they put in your GPA and assert um, your score on the GRE or something like that and you know have their little magic component and come up with a number to rank the students um, for candidates um, or sometimes they have like a selection committee and they go over the different applications and you know decide but GPA definitely plays a role so whether you're in high school or you're in college um, and you still have a chance to make sure your GPA is higher, I would do that. Um, me personally, I was never a person to really struggle in school, so um, I maintained usually A's and B's, very few C's, if any, um, throughout my entire education. Um, and I feel like that was one thing that definitely made me a good candidate for the program and um, put me kind of higher up on the selection list because you know that GPA just helped to boost everything because um, I've never been one to test really well for um, standard
standardized test. I do okay, but I don't feel like it really shows, you know, what's all in here. Um, but, you know, that GPA is just something that's solid that's going to show that you are um, an outstanding student. And they're looking for outstanding students to make their programs look good. Um, so that's one thing. Another thing is to be open to um, applying for different scholarships and um, internships, any type of you know, program that can help you fund your education because you do need a master's degree to be a speech language pathologist. Some areas you can be a speech language pathologist assistant um, with like a certain uh, degree program, um, but where I live, that's just not, you know, a common thing. Um, and you didn't go to school all that time, you know, to be somebody's assistant. So just go ahead, you know, and get some funding together. Um, like I said, I was in the McNair program. Um, and so if the university that you are um, enrolled has that program, go and see what it's about. Or even a program that's similar that would help you to pay for um, your education. Go ahead and see what that's about. I always tell, you know, anyone, my little cousins um, or anyone that I meet, if there's something with ship at the end, jump on that ship. Scholarship, fellowship, internship, um, whatever it is, um, usually it's a good thing um, as related to college. So um, look out for those opportunities. Sometimes it's just writing an essay and then they'll just, you know, send you a check for some books or something like that. So be aware of that. Um, and also you want to um, be sure that you have an advisor that will support you. Um, one thing that um, Clark Atlanta University as well as the University of Louisiana at Lafayette um, provided for me um, was an academic advisor um, that was um, truly invested in my success and making sure that I was aware of the expectations for what I wanted to do. And when I got to UL and said that I wanted to be a speech language pathologist and you know, I declared my major, my academic advisor, she said, you're smart. She said, you've got, you know, basically straight A's here. Um, keep those straight A's, you know you have to get a master's degree, right? You know you have to take your GRE, right? You know, things like that just to make sure that I was aware of it. Not that she didn't think I could do it, but just to keep those goals in mind because um, it's definitely attainable. I always tell people I'm lazy, so if I did it, you can do it. Um, but it's just something that you definitely have to work towards, especially if you, you know, are not necessarily um, one that grasps concepts really easily. You know, if, you if you're a person that has to study, you're going to have to study. You're going to have to write um, because these are things and topics that you may have never, you know, studied before. Um, you know, we had to do neuro courses and, you know, learn the different, um, you know, lobes of the brain. And if one area of the brain has suffered trauma, how that would affect a person's speech and language. Um, you know, like I said, we learn the muscles from the waist up. Anything that is required to breathe, speak, and swallow um, and hear, we had to know it. So just make sure that you are, you know, realizing that we get to play with kids, you know, or, you know, hang out and help the elderly or help those who are sick, you know, who've had a stroke or something like that. But um, it takes, it's a process to get to that point and it takes, you know, some dedication there. Um, but it's also not impossible. You do take your GRE. Um, while you're an undergrad, you go ahead and take that so that you can... Um, you know, work on your score, improving your score if you need to, and that's going to go into, you know, one of those um, uh, formulas or either be a, you know, playing factor in you being accepted into a graduate program. Um, also, like I mentioned before, we take the Praxis too. That's something you take towards the end of your graduate program um, or either after you finish your graduate program, you can do that as well, but that's going to be you know what you have to submit with your application for your licensure and also my graduate program likes to have our scores um on record with them as well uh, let's see 
the other applications are for your provisional license, um, your true, you know, unrestricted license to practice in, you know, whatever state you live in and um, other states as well. And also your certificate of clinical competence, you have to apply for that too. Um, as far as the career, like I said, it's very rewarding. Um, one of the challenging things about it is that we do have to do documentation. So even if you're having fun, you know, you're working with your student, you feel like they're making progress, their parents are so excited, you still have to be able to document um, that in a way so that um, it shows the student is making progress um, academically, if you work in the school system, or, you know, it shows that they're making progress so that the insurance company will continue to pay for it, or whatever it is. Um, so you have to be able to document um, that progress. Um, so there's a good bit of writing involved um, in the um, career, as well as if you do any type of um, testing, evaluations, assessments, screenings, you usually have to write up a report and be able to explain to people that are not speech language pathologists um, that may not, you know, have um, as much education as you or any background at all in the field what's going on with their child or with their parent or with their spouse. Um, you have to have pretty thick skin. Um, Throughout my schooling, it was a many a day where I was like boohooing and just had to get over it and dry my tears up and put my blazer back on and go ahead and be a student. Um, sometimes there's long nights with that, you know, um, but, you know, thick skin is something that will continue to, you know, grow um, as you, you know, get through your programs because um, people are constantly criticizing your work, whether it's your um, reports, whether it's your therapy practices, your strategies, your documentation, um, any type of labs that you do. Um, it's just a part of it and so um, it just makes it even more sweet when you get to the point where you're self-sufficient and you are pro you're a professional and so people accept what you say like if you do your testing you analyze your data and you say this child has a moderate language uh, disorder then people are going to accept that you know as long as you have your data to back you up so um, it just makes it even more sweet once things are not so um, critical <laughs> um, and you don't quite feel like you know a mouse in the cage and they're watching you know everything you you do there um, another thing that can be particularly um, challenging is just keeping up with all of your documents um, you have to make sure that your license is renewed every year or whatever the terms are for your estate. Um, also, your certification with ASHA, you want to keep that up to date. Any um, certificates that you need, like my Department of Education certificate initially was, I believe, three years. And then once I renewed it, um, I was like, yes, Charlie got that certificate for life. <laughs> So um, it just depends on what the certificate is. So you just want to keep track of those dates just to make sure that you're not, you know, practicing without a license or, you know, something like that because that could get you in really big trouble. <laughs> um, so you just want to be aware of all the policies and procedures and deadlines for things like that um, and keep up with your continued education units. Um, that's something that we have to do, but it's pretty much fun because you're not necessarily getting a grade. You're learning um, in order to continue to be better. I believe I've covered everything here. Make good grades, get your master's degree, don't forget about your licenses and certification, and most of all, just be encouraged. Um, it was a very difficult time in my life to be in school, but now to see the way that, you know, therapy improves the lives of my students and their families, and even if it's not necessarily something that I've done, but maybe another therapist has made so much progress with the student that by the time they come to me, they get to graduate from speech therapy. Um, just different things really added so much value to what we do as speech language pathologists. So I hope you feel informed. If you are in school to become a speech language pathologist, I hope you feel empowered. And as always, if you have any questions um, that I feel like I can't answer, then please leave them in the comment section below.
don't forget to thumbs up this video um if you have any more ideas for videos as far as um my career then um, i'm definitely taking suggestions and i'll see y'all in the next video love y'all sugars